What is up, YouTube? Today we're going to be talking about Git Rebase versus Git Merge. And I'm going to show you the different ways that these functions behave and also when you should use them, some of the good and bad, and then my experience on my preferences and kind of some context on when you might want to use Git Rebase versus a Git Merge. So let's jump into it and I'll show you some cool stuff. So hopefully you already understand what Git is, but in case you don't, and you're just curious about this video, then let's set a ground level so that everybody understands exactly what this is. Git is a version control system. It's engineered to be for distributed workflows, and it's basically beaten everything else. So it is very, very high in market adoption. I think something like 90 plus percent of developers use Git in their current either personal projects or work projects. And so it's something that you will run into if you're a professional developer. Now, why do all these companies and professional developers use Git? Well, it's because it's lightweight. It's super easy to create branches, which I'll get more into in just a second. It comes installed on almost every machine nowadays. So on Windows, I think you have to install it on the embedded Linux, then you can use that and it should have Git installed, I believe. If you're running a Linux machine or if you are on a Mac OS, then you already have it installed. So you can just type Git and you will see that show up on your terminal. It was actually created by Linus Torvalds, who was working on the Linux kernel at the time. So you can kind of see, hey, Linux, and now it's using Git as a version control for working on it. Super awesome technology. He was working on that. And so he is the creator of Git. I believe he was the sole contributor for a long period of time and kind of cranked it out. So thanks Linus. Like I mentioned before, it's made for distributed work. And so branching, like creating new branches of work to where you're gonna do your work as a developer is really lightweight. Instead of cloning everything onto your machine, basically having a whole copy of the entire code base that you work in and then push up into the version control system, it just keeps track of diffs. And so, what it does is it uses a SHA technology. So that's a secure hashing algorithm that will keep track of the differences between some, some set of files and what you change. And because it's only keeping track of those differences, it's really lightweight and you can quickly create branches or check out somebody else's changes so that you can see differences across the code base. So it uses a SHA-1 hashing function. And that means whenever it's given data, it's gonna give you the same output which is that you know long string of characters for whatever your input is. What this does is you can generate the exact same SHA for any set of files that were changed, and then you can keep doing that. So it's gonna give you the same output, and then if your input changes, which are the files that you've changed, then you're gonna get a different output, and you can continuously run this hashing function, and it'll give you the same output for the same input, which is really critical. Now that we've level set on exactly what Git is doing, let's jump into using this tool that I found where it shows you in a visual style all the different things that Git is doing with changing pointers and changing branches. And I'll show you in a visual way how to use Git Merge and Git Rebase. Let's start with Git Merge. So first off, this is combining two sets of work and merging them together so that we can cut a release branch or maybe deploy to production or something like that. Okay, so oh, it's a little dramatic, but you get the picture. We're trying to merge two things into one and have an example here of where we have a couple of commits on a branch called bug fix. And then we have a commit on our main branch that is not in that one. You can see in the asterisk, that is the branch that I have checked out right now. So right now I have checked out the main branch and you can see the list of commands that I have run thus far. So checked out bug fix, did a commit, went to main, did a commit, and we went to back to bug fix because we forgot something and we made another change there. So we're on main. Now if we do a git merge bug fix, we can see that it takes that work and puts it onto main and creates a new commit for us. Now, this is what's known as a merge commit. And so whenever you merge those changes together, one of the really nice things about git merge is it retains that history. So you have your changes on the bug fix branch and then your changes in main, and then a new commit that captures, you know, merging that stuff together. So this is where you would handle merge conflicts. 
and make sure that everything looks good for when you cut that release. Merging is usually the default in things like GitHub. And so I'll show you a screenshot here. And this is you know, just the default. It normally lets you do that merge commit so you can retain that history and GitHub will just do that for you. So one of the good things that Git Merge gives you is retaining the time history. And so like the commits that we did on the main branch will be at the time that the work was done. And so they will interleave with the work that is done on the bug fix branch. I'll show you that here in a second. So if you care about retaining the time that work was done, then Git Merge is your friend. Also, like I mentioned earlier, it makes sure that with that new merge commit, you understand exactly when you merge that stuff in together. One of the biggest downsides to Git Merge is that you have this really messy history. Let me show you an example of that. Here's our example of showing you how to handle merge conflicts using Git Merge and then also seeing that merge commit that happens. Also, I'm gonna show you the time series that happens whenever you have different commits. So let's show this. We're on the main branch and we have three commits. We have the initial one and then we branched off with our bug fix branch. And then we have a first commit on main, which is the first thing that happened on main. And then there were two commits on the bug fix branch. And then I came back here and did another commit on main. So. Now that we have that, let's do a git merge bug fix. And we're gonna have a problem here because we actually changed the same file in two of the commits. So one of the commits on the bug fix branch changed a file and then the main branch changed a file. Whenever you do a git status here, then you'll see that, hey, we have a couple of things changed. Uh, one of them is good to go because it was adding another file on the bug fix branch. And then this one is a conflict. So if we open up our test TXT here, you can see that Git puts in the differences. So on the bottom section, we see that bug fix is this bottom section of changes. And the top section is the changes from main. And so if we merge this. So we actually want it to say hello world and not just hello. Then we can delete that fix all our changes. And if we do a git status, we will see that they're both modified and Git will prompt you whenever you're in the middle of this. So you can say git add tests to .txt. And then from there we see we're good to go because we have these conflicts. We have to create a merge commit. And so we can say git commit and we don't give it any message or anything, and it automatically gives us this merge commit. It says it's merging branch bug fix, and we can quit out of this. And if we do a git log, we will see that you know our branch is getting merged in here. And so this is the reason that a lot of people don't like git merge, is because you have this branch out of the changes that were made because of the merge commits. And so you see, it kind of bubbles out and you have to figure out like, okay, when was this work made? When was this work pulled in and then sort out in history when your changes came in back into the branch that you care about. And so I think I may have misspoken earlier, but what we'll see here is that it captures when the commits were made. And so we have the, the first commit on main, the last commit, latest commit on main, and then we have our bug fix changes that were applied on top of it. Now let's walk through git rebase. And what rebase essentially means is you're changing the base commit on your branch. And so what we want to do is take the commits that we have on bug fix and rebase them to have the commit that's on main and then start from there. So what this is going to do is actually rewrite history, which is one of the, the things that a lot of people have worries about is we're cleaning our bug fix branch to then get merged into the main branch. So we're gonna create new commits and I'll show you how to do that here. So in this setup, we have the same C2 and C3 on our bug fix branch, and then we have a commit on main. Now we're gonna already be on the bug fix branch. And if I do a git rebase main, so this is gonna create two new commits off of the main branch. And you can see that here, C2, and C3 have now changed to be a C2 single quote and a C3 single quote, but they're based off of the latest commit on main. And whenever you're doing this Git rebase, 
make sure you've pulled the latest from the main branch. Otherwise you're going to miss out on stuff. Now that I have this all ready to go, I can go back over to the main branch and we can pull in our changes. So if I do a git checkout main and we do a git merge bug fix, then it's going to do a fast forward commit and everything is on our main branch and ready to go either to production or QA, however you like to do it. A lot of people do like the Git flow. And so this would be maybe your develop branch or your development branch, which then kicks off your whole build process. In GitHub, you can actually configure rebase to be the default option, but you need to change it. You can see that here in this screenshot where it's configured in this repository to be the default and you can just click the button and it'll do that rebase for you. One of the huge advantages for doing this rebase is so you have a nice clean history. And I'll show you that here in another example in just a second, but you want to have that nice clean history so you can see all the commits in serialized order. And that way you don't have to figure out like when some work was done and when it was merged in. Like I mentioned before, one of the bad things is you're actually rewriting history. And so whenever you're handling these merge conflicts, you have to figure out in that commit what the state should be. And so it can get a little bit confusing if you're not continuously integrating. But one of the one of the things I prefer is to use rebase and then merge it in like we did. If you're ever afraid of losing history, don't worry. You can always run this command git ref log and this will show you all the commits that have been made on the machine. And so you can always get your data back or your changes back as long as you make a commit. So this is another reason why you should commit often. Even if it's a whip commit, you can change it and make sure you get that data back in your ref log. Let's walk through a rebase from the command line. So right here, we do a git log. We have the two commits. So we made our first commit on main and a latest commit on main. Now, if we wanted to rebase the changes from bug fix, we have to do a git checkout bug fix. And if we do a git log, we have a couple of commits there. Now we will do a git rebase main. And this is where we run into merge conflicts. So we do a git status and we can see we've both modified one of the same files. So we'll open that up and fix our merge conflict. So we want to get rid of that one. We want the whole hello world. Now we do a git status we can see a bunch of different options. The one that we want to continue with is git rebase dash dash continue. And now that we've done that, oh, whoops, I forgot to add it. Let's do that. Git status, we've updated it and this looks good. Now we will do a git rebase continue. And this is where we have our commit. So, if we do a git log here, then we see that we have the two main commits and then the two commits that were plopped on top of it. If you notice from before, we actually have different commit SHAs for the second commit and the first commit on that bug fix branch. Because like we saw in the visual mode, it actually creates new commits off of that base. And what does git do? It does differences from one set of changes or like from a base to whatever you've done. So previous to what you have in doing that, our input has changed to our SHA function and we have new commit SHAs for each of those commits that we had. So if we quit out of here and we do a git checkout main and we do a git merge bug fix, then we see that we have those commits on our main branch and they're good to go. This is how I like to work. I actually prefer to clean up my commits on the bug fix branch, make sure everything's good to go, and then bring them over into the main or the development branch, and then ship them out that way. Now, some context here. So I prefer to do trunk-based development, and so normally I don't have a lot of branching, and so I don't have a lot of long-lived branches, and so I'll make some changes and then rebase them onto that branch and then merge them right into main, and we're good to go. Now, if you ever have problems, again, use git ref log and you can always find your commits because you should be committing often and that way you never lose your changes. Now, if you're working on a large distributed team or if you're working on open source software, 
feel like those tend to lean more into the merge commits and like merging using a git merge. And so that way you have your history and it's all there and it's not changed. And then if you have a problem, then you can always roll that PR or like that merge commit back and get back to a state that you know that works. If you like this content, then please like and subscribe. It definitely helps and shows this video to more people that may be interested in it. If you have opinions on Git Merge or Git Rebase, or you have a different flow that you like to work with, definitely share in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.